Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are testing out the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation. We're getting a little bit of a late start to this video today. It's already like 4.30 in the afternoon. I wasn't even planning on filming a video though because I still have influenza. This thing will just not go away. But yeah, you guys have been wanting me to do this foundation for quite some time now, so I can't wait to finally test it out. We are still gonna be doing a wear test on this, even though it's so late in the day already. I still am gonna make it probably like eight to 10 hours, just wear it until I go to sleep probably. Yes. Yeah, so if you guys wanna know how this foundation works out on my oily skin, then it just keep on watching. Okay, so this is the Dior Forever Undercover 24 our full coverage foundation. This is what the bottle looks like. It's kind of a strange bottle. I was expecting this to be a glass bottle when I saw it online and when I got it, I realized that it's like rubber or I don't know, but it's squishy. It's like a tube. And then I also thought it would have a pump, but it doesn't. It's a squeezy tube. This foundation is $52. They came out with 24 shades and I do think they should expand the shade range a little bit. I was looking at the pictures online. While they do have quite a few different shades, I feel like a lot of the undertones tones were kind of the same and there wasn't that many dark shades and the lightest shades didn't look like super light. Anyways, I do have the shade 020 and this is another matte foundation. You guys know I love my matte foundations. This is supposed to be made for all skin types. You can use it if you're oily, dry, combination sensitive. So I think that's pretty cool and it also claims to be full coverage while still feeling weightless on the skin. Okay, so let's get into trying this out. I'm gonna be doing this the same way that I do every other foundation review. We're gonna use a beauty blender on half my face and then a brush on the other half and then use a favorite primer of mine on one half and then no primer on the other side, just to see if it applies differently and if it wears differently throughout the day with uh, the primer. So luckily, since I'm so sick, my face is like extra, extra red today. So we will definitely be putting this full coverage-ness to the test today. So I'm gonna be using my Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer today. This is one of my favorite primers. I love the way this makes my skin look and feel. It just really softens the look, evens out my redness, and definitely prolongs the wear of my makeup. So I love this primer. And then while we let that primer kind of sink into the skin, we're gonna work on the side with no primer. I don't know how much to use because you can't get like a pump, but I'm just gonna put that much on the back of my hand and just pick up like one dot of it. And then we're gonna dot this around. I'm gonna start with less and then build up if I need more. And we're also starting with a beauty sponge on the side. Ooh, definitely has a fragrance and I'm sick and I can still smell it. <laughs> like I don't mind scents and foundations, um, but sometimes they do give a lot of people like headaches and just bother people. They don't really bother me. The only problem with fragrances is that I do break out sometimes since I do have pretty sensitive skin. But hopefully that won't be a problem with this foundation. Okay, so I really didn't even use that much and that covered up a lot if you can compare to this side. Covered up a lot of my redness. I didn't really have any acne over here. Some acne scarring, but not like I have on this side. We're gonna go in with a little bit more to see how this builds up. I'm just gonna go in with like the same amount actually. Get some on my nose. It also is spreading out really nicely too. I'm not having any issues with it like tugging on my skin or just giving me any difficulties while blending it out. So that's nice. Okay, so I still have a lot left on my hand and I didn't even think I really put that much on the back of my hand to start off with and it covered up pretty good. I like the way that it's looking on my skin so far. It looks very soft, not settling in my fine lines yet and it's covering up fairly well. I don't know if I would consider this full coverage though. It claims to be extreme, oh no, it claims to be extreme wear foundation but it does say it's full coverage. I don't think I would say this is full coverage though. I would probably say medium. Could probably build it up to be full coverage but I don't wanna to put too much foundation on my face because it can start to look really heavy on me. So I'm not gonna be putting any more on this side. But so far, this is what the coverage is looking like. And you know what? It might actually be drying a little bit darker now that I'm seeing this side of my face. Okay, let's use a brush on this side of my face then. And we're using the Sigma F80. Why do I say we? I'm using the Sigma F80 brush. This is my favorite foundation brush. Talk about this brush all the time, but I just love it. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side, just three dots, and then I still have a little bit left on my hand. Just gonna work this into the skin. Okay, so it's covering nicely. 
I'm getting a little bit more covered with the brush. Uh, it said online also that you should apply it with either your fingertips or a, a brush to get full coverage. So using a beauty blender wasn't recommended if you wanted the full coverage, but I hate using my fingers to apply foundation. So I'm that's just not even an option for me, especially when they say online that you can use a brush too. So far, yeah, so I do think, oh wow, look at how much darker it dried. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to tell, but I can definitely see this side is lighter. Okay, I thought it was my light, so I kind of like moved them a little bit and it still looks a little bit darker on the side. I don't know, am I crazy or are you guys seeing this too? Okay, I'm just gonna keep it moving on and use the rest of what's on the back of my hand to build this up a little bit, just where I think I need a little bit extra coverage. Yeah, this is covering great though. I'm surprised at how much it's covering up my redness, but it still doesn't look like a full coverage foundation. Like, you know how sometimes foundations can just look like a mask when they finally cover everything up. This one definitely still looks like my skin, I would say. Okay, so I'm looking at it more up close now. I don't wanna block the camera. It is starting to settle in my smile lines on this side of my face. I don't really have smile lines on this side, so it doesn't happen over there, but on this side it is settling in them. It's not really settling in the line of my chin yet. I think it looks pretty good though, and it still hasn't dried completely down. It still feels a little bit tacky to the touch, but it does look nice in the skin. I feel like, I don't know. So when I tried the other Dior foundation, it was the, the other one that's really popular, and I had the same problem right on the apples of my cheeks, sorry, where my pores are a little bit larger. I feel like it was kind of enhancing them and I kind of feel like that's happening right now. Yeah, I feel like it's just enhancing my larger pores right here and then kind of like in the center of my forehead. Other than that though, I think it looks good everywhere else. Covered up nicely. Still don't think this is a full coverage foundation though. I still would consider this a medium coverage foundation for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and set my face and just finish up all my makeup and see if that changes anything and then I will be right back. Okay, so I finished up my makeup about 15 minutes ago, so I'm just gonna call time at five or 4.45. So I do like it better than I did before I set my makeup, but you know what? I just, I don't love it. There's something about it, like it's not really like grabbing anywhere or doing anything that's like super noticeable, but there's just something about it that I'm not necessarily um, liking. I don't know what it is about it, but one second I really like it. I'm looking at it like even right now and I think it looks beautiful. I think it looks really soft and just really nice. And then I get really up close and I kind of start to nitpick a little bit and find things that I'm not liking about it. For instance, I feel like it's just aging my skin a little bit when I get really up close. Like even from here, so not that far, it looks really good. But then the closer I get, the more I notice it. It's just kind of making my cheek area like this whole, Actually, everything but my forehead, so like from here down, everything just kind of looks enhanced. And honestly, I don't know if that's because my skin is so like parched and dry right now because I'm so sick that I haven't really been drinking as much fluids as I should be. So maybe my skin is just not happy today and that's what's making me think it looks kind of bad. I don't know, it just looks really bumpy on this whole area. And my chin, even though it's not creasing in the line in my chin, I feel like my chin just looks really dry. It almost looks really wrinkly around this line in my chin, which is super weird. It isn't creasing in my smile lines anymore, so I said that it was starting to settle in this line right here before I set my makeup. And since I set it, it's not settling or creasing in that line. It's not creasing in the sides of my nose. It still, like I seriously could not cover any of this stuff up over here, which I thought was kind of weird because I feel like um, it looked like it was covering a little bit more before, but now I can really see them. But it didn't oxidize and my concealer went over it really nicely. I only put a little bit of concealer right underneath my eyes and just a little bit where I needed some like over my pimples, which <laughs> didn't even work. I just don't love it. From afar, I think it looks really pretty though. Like as I'm looking on the monitor right now, I think it looks pretty. But then when I zoomed the camera up, I was like, ugh. Maybe once my natural oils start to come through my skin throughout the day, it'll start to look a little bit better. We'll have to see how it's gonna do with my oily skin because right now it is just looking a little bit dry. Okay, so I'm gonna check in with you guys a little bit later and show you guys what it looks like after a few hours of wear. So yeah, I will see you guys in a couple hours. Okay 
guys so it's the end of the day now it is 12 come on 38 so it's been um eight hours i think i'm sorry i didn't do a check-in like i always do in my other foundation reviews i have just been trying to rest today so i didn't get to it but i did want to give you a little bit of an update of what i thought about it throughout the past eight hours so about an hour after i left you guys i actually started to really like it i feel like my natural oils came through and kind of just like diminished everything that I was worried about. My pores didn't look enhanced, my skin looked soft, and it didn't look like bumpy and textured and like dry like it was before. That lasted for about two hours, I wanna say. I, I was about four hours in when I checked and I was still really liking it. And then shortly after that was when it started kind of going downhill. Looking at it right now, it's not terrible, but it doesn't look good. I wouldn't say this is anywhere near like the worst foundation that I've tried but it's definitely not the best. I don't love it. It's kind of like another NARS foundation, how I'm kind of in the middle with it because I did like it for a period of time today, but um, just looking at it now, I don't know, it's separating. It's definitely enhancing a lot of my texture on my cheeks. My chin looks terrible. My chin looks the worst out of everything. It just looks really dry, really like flaky and kind of wrinkly and it's settling in the smile lines right here. I'm not really oily, a little bit shiny on my forehead, but <laughs> hardly so that is one major plus for me i love when i don't get super oily in foundations it did come off on my nose right above my eyebrows a little bit down here around my acne it has transferred off you know i kind of expected that though on my nose because since i am sick i'm kind of like rubbing my nose a lot and blowing my nose so i expected it to come off my nose today but it did transfer on other places which doesn't always happen i feel like it looks a little patchy also like it just looks Looks like it's darker in some spots. Yeah, I just think the main thing is that it's enhancing the texture and just making my skin look really dry. Although my skin is very dry right now. Is my lip bleeding? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know about this foundation. I'm just in the middle with this one, even though I don't like the way how it looks right now. I do want to give this foundation another fair shot another time, um, just because I it did look good for a while today. Maybe I can try out with some different primers, different setting sprays, setting powders. Maybe once I get some more fluids in me, my skin won't be so dry and it kind of hard to like deal with. Because for all I know, this could be a great foundation that I don't get oily in or anything, but my skin is just having Having one of those terrible days so I really don't know but just from the looks of it right now it's not amazing <laughs> I will say though where I got oily on my forehead it is separating a little bit so I wouldn't be able to blot this if I did get really oily which really sucks so yeah not liking the separation and not liking how it's settling in this fine line right here my whole chin just looks super dry and all of my texture on my cheeks is very very enhanced right now so those are my cons my pros are that I didn't really get oily it did look pretty for about four hours ish today i really did like it it looked really soft and it just looked very like skin like i like the finish it has i also like how it didn't look heavy on the skin or um like cakey but now it looks cakey which sucks so the cons definitely weigh out the pros at this point i am gonna keep trying this and just try to see if something else kind of agrees with it and makes it work a little bit better. Let me know if you guys have any of these same issues that I'm experiencing right now with this foundation and if you guys have found a way to make it work or if you guys have like the same skin as me then definitely let me know what works for you with this foundation. I'm going to test this foundation out in a couple days and I'm going to leave a little note in the description box or in the comments of this video and just kind of update you on if it worked better the second time trying it for me. But yeah, I really hope this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.